Shabbat Shalom, everybody. We hope everybody's having a wonderful Shabbat day. Um, we definitely hope, Ahaya willing, that this video comes out better than the last. And of course, you know that we we added some things and took some things out to make the, the lesson a bit more interesting and, and more scripturally based. So we hope that you all enjoy it. The lesson, we're going into science to identify the tribes. And uh, it's going to be an in-part lesson. So we decided to break it up to give you more information and to go more detail-based scripturally. So um, without further ado, all right, Kasa? All right. In the last lesson on the four corners of the earth, we looked at what areas the four corners of the earth were. Uh, today, the Israelites are scattered among all people, serving idols all over the earth, even beyond the four corners of the earth, according to the curses. You can look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64, please. And the highest shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other Elohims, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And can you also read Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 9, please? And I will deliver them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places where I shall drive them. Now, that verse in itself is an overview of what condition the Israelites would be in wherever they are in the earth. I also caused our remembrance to cease. Hence, the world on a whole does not know who the 12 tribes of Israel are, much less how to identify them today. He had spoken of that. Uh, can you read Deuteronomy 32 and 26? So we can see how Ahia said he would cause our remembrance to cease. So we can understand why the world as a whole doesn't know who the 12 tribes of Israel are today. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Right, here we see uh, it was Ahia's doing as to why the nations don't know who we are and also why we ourselves did not know who we are. Now, to fulfill his word, we, we were scattered by the nations, as he said he would scatter us into corners, and the nations forwarded the effort to make the remembrance of the 12 tribes to cease. Sadly, they took advantage of the situation because we were being given over to reproach for our iniquities. They took advantage of the situation by trying to wipe out the tribes altogether. And Ahia was not pleased with it, but this is what they attempted to do. And can we read Zechariah chapter 1, verse 15, please? Sure. I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. So we can see how Ahia told how the nations had took advantage of him being upset with us. And we can look at uh, Psalms 83 verse 2 to 5 to see how these nations had they forwarded the affliction out of enmity towards Ahaya. Can you read that please? Psalms 83 verse 2 to 5 please. Psalms chapter 83 verse 2 For lo, thy enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up the head they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So we see, Ahia said he would cause our members to cease, but the nations, they sought to cut us off from being a nation altogether. Their goal was to completely wipe us out. Right, can you continue reading, please? For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. There we can understand what the world agenda is. What the nations that were our former neighbors when we lived in the land of Israel, what their agreement was amongst each other was to cut us off from being a nation. And in the effort to cause our remembrance to cease and cut us off, we have been called by other names contrary to who we actually are, like we call Negroes today, which from the Bible, they were sometimes referred to us as nigger as well and we're also called slaves and today you have the maps you can find 
from I think like 17th, 18th century where West Africa is called the Slave Coast, for example. And it is evident, as you know, for those who live in America, the um, particularly the Southern Kingdom, they're often spoken of when referencing the slave history. Uh, can you read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37, so we can see that being called these other names are also a part of the curses that will be upon us. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations for the Ahaya shall lead. And that did not only happen to the inhabitants of the Southern Kingdom who are known as the Negroes today, it also happened to what are known as the aboriginals and indigenous peoples of the Americas, the Pacific Ocean Islands and the Indian Ocean Islands. They were also subjugated and enslaved as well for those who are familiar with their histories. Uh, we can look in the scriptures to see how, the, as I have said, it would be a proverb and a byword among our nations. And the nations actually refer to us as some of the terms that we're still referred to as today, like slaves or nigger. In Judith chapter 14, verse uh, 13 to 18, when you read the book of Judith, the king of Assyria, which was Nebuchadnezzar, has sent out his top general to take over the earth. And when he came to the borders of Israel, he asked um, the Gentiles that were around the Israelites who we were. And the, there was a man from the children of Ammon that he explained that we came from the Chaldeans and uh, he gave our history. And then he told how we were enslaved by the Egyptians. And after hearing our story, we can see here in the scriptures how the people of the army of uh, Halafurnus, they referred to us as the slaves. They wouldn't even just call us the Hebrews. They were like, the slaves did this and the slaves did that. And just like how today people were known as, you know, the former slaves and whatnot. If you read Judith chapter 14, verse 13 and 18, please. And for those of you all who have the book, you can find it in the Apocrypha and you can read the whole story as well, if you like. Uh, Judith chapter 14, verse 13. So they came to Holofernes' tent and said to him, that had the charge of all his things. Awaken now, our Adono, for the slaves have been bold to come down against us to battle, that they may be utterly destroyed. And they're referring to us when they said the slaves have come down. Continue verse 18, please. The slaves have dealt treacherously. One woman of the Hebrews hath brought shame upon the house of King Nebuchadnezzar. For behold, Holofernes lieth upon the ground without a head. Notice they refer to us as slaves and they know full well what nation we actually are. They said one woman of the Hebrews. Right. So you can see how scripturally you can know who the Hebrews actually are today still, still being referred to as the slaves. And then you have uh, Acts chapter 13 verse 1 where they would also refer to us as nigger, which is a word for black because the Hebrews were people of color since ancient time, and they're still a people of color today. And range in color. If you don't mind reading that, Acts 13 and 1, please. Sure. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers at Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. That word nigger from Latin, it's also find it in Spanish and Portuguese as negro. And for those who look into the history of the Battle of Granada and what happened with the Jews that were in Spain and getting pushed out down into North Africa, when they went from being known as Jews, and by the time they got into North Africa, the Portuguese, when they started going with the slave trade, the Portuguese referred to them as Negro or the Blacks for us that speak English. And here we are today, we're still being called Black even from the ancient times on to now. Now, we had mentioned how these nations, particularly the ones that were our neighbors in the land of Israel, are the ones that are confederate together with one consent to cut us off from being a nation. And those nations are mentioned when we go back to Psalms 83, verse 5 to 8, please. Psalms chapter 83, verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites right. of Moab and the Hagarines, Gebel and Ammon and Amalek, 
the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children a lot. Shalom. So you can see how the, all the people that are around us had a concerted effort to get rid of us. Hence, today in the Middle East, you don't hear much about us. No one is divulging the information of who we actually are because it's all one consent. And sadly, the chief people are Edom and the Ishmaelites. And these are our relatives who have predominant rulership in the world. As our second Ezra chapter six, verse nine mentions, Edom is the end of the world and Jacob is for the one that followeth. And that lets us know that Edom is ruling the world today. And the Ishmaelites, they are with the control of a lot of the oil in the Middle East and whatnot. They are some of the most wealthiest as well in the world today and hold a lot of sway having control of those resources. Yeah, even both of them even have majority of control over religion as well. Edom controls Christianity um, in all its facets. And then you have the second largest religion being by the, the Ishmaelites. Being, right. Being Islam. Muhammad. So. Right. right. And that's a great stronghold there. I knew who would have strong influence and control and be helping for this effort more than anyone else. Now, notice also it mentioned the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. These are actually Hamites that had dwelt on the seacoast. And you may have heard before that, you know, blacks were selling blacks in the slave trade. Well, this is true. We had been selling each other for slaves for sake of gain, even in the days of Nehemiah when you read chapter 5. Yet, and still, not all black people are the children of Israel because there are multiple nations of color. The Israelites were not the only nation of color from the ancient times. And these Hamites, the Philistines and the Canaanites, have also aided in the enslavement of the children of Israel into the hand of Edom. Hence, we can even see it in the scriptures. Can we look at Amos chapter 1 verse 6 and verse 9, please? Amos chapter 1 verse 6. Thus saith Ahiah, for three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Gaza, that's another term when referencing Philistines. Because they carried away captives the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. So we can see what role the Hamites were playing to help give us up to the children of Edom, who was the first nation mentioned in that confederacy to destroy the children of Israel, to cut them off from being a nation. The Philistines stem from the Egyptians which are the children of Ham. Can you continue verse 9, please? Amos chapter 1, verse 9. Thus saith Ahia, for three transgressions of Tyrus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom, and remember not the brotherly covenant. Tyrus, these are Canaanites. Canaan is also the son of Ham. They also helped in the endeavor to deliver all the children of Israel unto Edom. Hence, we've seen people of color selling people of color into slavery from ancient times. And it even happened in the what we know as the Arab and transatlantic slave trade. Can you also read concerning Tyrus it's in Joel chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, please? Joel chapter 3, verse 5. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. See, the, the whole goal is to scatter them and get them out of the land completely. Interestingly enough, it shows predominantly it was the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem, which are Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and the remnant of the 10 tribes that inhabited the land of Judah that were sold off into the ships and into the captivity more than the 10 tribes that had already left the four corners of the earth at that time. And that process of trying to get rid of the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem had been going on from since the Grecian Empire. And we can look at 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 39 to 41, please. All right. 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 39. And with them he sent 40,000 footmen and 7,000 horsemen to go into the land of Judah 
and to destroy it as the king commanded. So they went forth with all their power and came and pitched by Emmis in the plain country. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. A power also of Syria and of the land of the Philistines joined themselves unto them. So first you get to see that they were trying to come buy us for slaves. Right. Anytime there was war, everybody was prepared to buy us up. And then you also see that Syria also was helping. So it was a concerted effort from people around us trying to get us out of the land. The scriptures help understand where the Hebrews can predominantly be found in certain areas around the world today. Uh, now we'll look at what tribes constituted the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel to help build up to identifying what areas the tribes can be found in today. Start with the kingdom of Judah. The kingdom of Judah is comprised predominantly of Judah, Benjamin, the half tribe of Simeon, and the tribe of Levi. And there is a remnant of the 10 tribes that had stayed and lived in the land of Judah as well, as we're going to read in the scriptures. The kingdom of Israel, on the other hand, is comprised of the 10 tribes, which is Reuben, the other half of Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Joseph, which is Ephraim and Manasseh, Benjamin, and Zebulon and Issachar. So looking at the Southern Kingdom, starting there, can you read 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 16 and 17, and then 2 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 17, to see who comprised the kingdom of Judah? Okay, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 16. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the sons of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. So there we see what had happened for those who may not know. Uh, in about First Kings chapter 11, Solomon, he had made a mistake. And he was told to him that in his son, the kingdom would be divided. No longer would the 12 tribes of Israel remain under one house, under David. It was told Solomon that his son would only retain one tribe. And then there was a prophet went out and showed Jeroboam, a man of Ephraim from the children of Joseph, that 10 tribes would be given to him. So that's how the split came about. And when they said to your tents, O Israel, even at that time, before the kingdom got split up, when mentioning Israel in that regard, it was known that Israel was the ten tribes as opposed to when speaking of Judah. In uh, 2 Samuel 19 and 43, it said, The men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than ye. So you can see how Israel was known as the ten parts even before. All right. Uh, can you continue where you're at, please? I think. I'm in and, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 17. All right. But as for the children of Israel, which dwell in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Sure, they said the children of Israel that dwelt in the city of Judah. So there we see that some of the 10 tribes remained in Judah under Rehoboam. Now, that continued, and there were more people from the 10 tribes that came into the land of Judah in the days of Asa, king of Judah, because Ahiah was with him. Can we read uh, Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 9 and 10, please? Sure. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin, and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh, and out of Simeon. For they fell to him out of Israel in abundance, when they saw that Ahiah his Elohim was with him. So you see how when they saw Ahiah was with him, they, was, they came all down. And notice they were referred to as strangers because their original land was the land allotted to them in the kingdom of Israel. Second, Continue, please. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 10. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the 15th year of the reign of Asa. Also, as it mentioned out of Simeon, Simeon, he had foretold his children that they would be divided in Judah and Levi. Hence, you can find some of the Simeonites among the kingdom of Judah 
as their father foretold. Can you read the Testament of Simeon chapter five? And can you jump to verse six, please? Uh, Testament of Simeon chapter five, verse six. For he shall wage the war of Ahiah and shall conquer all your hosts. And they shall be few in number, divided in Levi and Judah. And there shall be none of you for sovereignty, even as also our father prophesied in his blessings. That is important to understand as well as we go forward. You can confirm that the tribe of Simeon was still amongst the inhabitants of Judah by Judith, the Simeonite woman, along with some of the tribe of Simeon that was still in the land of Judea when the Babylonian came in the book of Judah. Seeing that Simeon was amongst Judah and Levi as well, that lets us know that you can definitely find Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in the southern kingdom, as well as a remnant of Simeon there. There was a verse that I missed to identify that Benjamin had remained with the kingdom of Judah. I apologize. First Kings chapter 12, verse 19 verse 21 and verse 23. It said, So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And then verse 21 said, And when Roban was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin. So you can see that he had Judah and Benjamin there with him. And 104 score chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Roban, the son of Solomon. Verse 22 in 23, but the word of Elohim came unto Shemaiah, the man of Elohim, saying, Speak unto Roabam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and all the house of Judah and Benjamin. So notice Judah and Benjamin is there in the kingdom of Judah. And it goes on to say, and the remnant of the people. That's the remnant of the 10 tribes that stayed in the kingdom of Judah. So you can have scripture reference to know who remained in the kingdom of Judah. And the Levites had fled down from the kingdom of Israel into the land of Judah because they were not allowed to minister in the priest office anymore. When the Jeroboam the king had became king in the northern kingdom, he stopped them from executing the priest office and he put new priests in their place for the worshiping of idols. You can reference that in 1 Kings 12 and 31. This is in reference to Jeroboam. It says, And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. And the verse that shows that the Levites had left is Second Chronicles chapter 11, verse 14 to 15. It says, For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest office unto Ahiah, and he ordained him priest for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. So just want to make sure you have scriptural reference to understand the southern kingdom was comprised of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and a remnant of Simeon, and also a remnant of the ten tribes. Now, concerning the ten tribes of the kingdom of Israel, they had been taken into captivity by the king of Assyria, according to the records. You can look at Second Chronicles chapter 17 for a direct reference for that. Now, when they were taken captive, some of them went over to Assyria and the land of the Medes. By the time, at some point, by the time of the Babylonian captivity of the kingdom of Judah, the ten tribes predominantly had left to go to the region known as Arsaret. And that region is what is known today as the islands of the Indian Ocean, the islands of the Pacific Ocean, the islands of the Caribbean Ocean, and the Americas, North, Central, and South America, is what is biblically was referred to as the region of Arsaret. Now, that was just an overview of what became of the Northern Kingdom. We're going to look at scriptures to see what we just went over was actually true according to the scriptures. We had discussed how the kingdom of Judah had a remnant of the ten tribes amongst them. Hence, though not all of the ten tribes from the kingdom of Israel were in the land of Judah, you could find some of them among them. And that held true by the time of the Babylonian captivity as well, because in Second Baruch chapter 77, verse 1 and 2, 
you can see Baruch is speaking to the inhabitants of the kingdom of Judah, but he references those that are remaining of the 12 tribes to confirm that there was a remnant of the 10 tribes among the inhabitants of the kingdom of Judah as well. You can read that, please. Second Baruch chapter 77, verse 1. And I, Baruch, went there and came to the people and assembled them together from the greatest to the least and said unto them, Hear you, children of Israel, behold how many you are whom remain of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now we can understand why he said, ye that remain of the 12 tribes of Israel, because that was the remnant of the people that was still in the land that had been there. And you can confirm also that there was also still a remnant of the 10 tribes, even in the days when Christ had came on the earth. There was a woman of the tribe of Asher in uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 36, Anna the prophetess. So you can see that indeed there was people of the 10 tribes still among the inhabitants of Judah. Now, by the time of the Babylonian captivity, as we mentioned, Israel had went to the land of Arsareth, while there was also still a remnant of the 10 tribes that had not went to the region of Arsareth, that did not go to the Americas. They had remained in the land of Assyria and the Medes, by example of people like Tobit. He was of the tribe of Naphtali and his cousin Raguel. Tobit lived in Nineveh in Assyria. His cousin Raguel lived in the land of Media in uh, Ecbatain, and also Tobit's son Tobias. He lived his whole life in and died actually in the land of the Medes. So you can see that there also was some of the ten tribes that actually stayed in the land of Assyria and the land of uh, the Medes, where they were taken captive. When you read Second Kings in chapter seventeen, can you touch on those verses for Tobit, so you can see that there were people of the northern tribe that lived in the land of the Assyrians and Medes. In Tobit chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, verse 14, and then chapter 3, verse 7, and chapter 14, verse 12, please. And of course, you have your Bible. You can go read the whole story of Tobit at Chalesia. It's a really good story. A good edification for us all. Tobit chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the words of Tobit, son of Tobiel, the son of Ananiel, the son of Aduel, the son of Gabiel of the seed of Ashiel, of the tribe of Naphtali, who in the time of Enmaneser, king of the Assyrians, was led captive out of Thisbe, which is at the right hand of that city, which is called properly Naphtali in Galilee above Asher. I, Tobit, have walked all the days of my life in the ways of truth and justice, and I did many alms and deeds to my brethren and my nation, who came with me to Nineveh, into the land of the Assyrians. All right, verse 14. And I went into Midia, and left in trust with Gabael, the brother of Gabrias, at Rages, a city in Midia, ten talents of silver. There was also Raguel, his cousin, in the land of the Medes. When we read Tobit 3 and 7, please. It came to pass the same day that at Ecbatane, a city of Midia, Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, was also reproached by her father's maids. And we can look to see also that Tobias, which was the son of Tobit, who ended up marrying Raguel's daughter, Sarah, he ended up living his life out in the land of Media as well. And we read Tobit chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, please. Uh, Tobit chapter 14, verse 12. And when Anna, his mother, was dead, he buried her with his father. But Tobias departed with his wife and children to Ecbatane, to Raguel, his father-in-law, where he became old with honor, and he buried his father and mother-in-law honorably, and he inherited their substance and his father Tobit's. And he died at Ecbatane in Midia, being 107 and 20 years old. So we touched on that so you can see that there were still people of the 10 tribes that lived in Assyria and in the land of the Medes, even up until the time of the Babylonian captivity. And there were also people that were still righteous of the 10 tribes as well. Not all of the 10 tribes had been given over to iniquity. Now, that 10 tribes, you mentioned how by the time of the Babylonian captivity, they went over to the region of Arsara. And we can understand that by looking at Second Baruch chapter 77, verse 17 to 22, because we have seen that Baruch came to speak 
to inhabitants of the land of Judah in uh, chapter 77, verse 1 and 2. Now, the people at that time, they asked him to write a letter unto their brethren in Babylon. Baruch suggested that he not only would he do what they asked him by writing a letter unto their brethren in the land of Babylon, but he would also send a letter by an eagle to their brethren beyond or across the Euphrates, which we're going to see was actually in reference to the region of Asura, because he had to send it by a bird, because it required a long distance to get to the 10 tribes where they were. Can you read that, Baruch? Chapter 77, verse 17. Nevertheless, as you said unto me, I will write also unto your brethren in Babylon, and I will send by means of men, and I will write in like manner to the nine tribes and a half, and sin by means of a bird. Now notice he said nine tribes and a half. Remember how we talked about how Simeon's tribe would be divided amongst Judah and Levi. Hence, some of the Simeonites were, were accounted amongst the inhabitants in Judah, while the nine and a half, the rest of the ten, had gone to the regions of Osiris. Continue, please. Verse 18. And it came to pass on the one and twentieth day in the eighth month that I, Baruch, came and sat down under the oak, under the shadow of the branches, and no man was with me, but I was alone. And I wrote these two epistles, one I sent by an eagle to the nine and half tribes, and the other I sent to those that were at Babylon by means of three men. And I called the eagle and spoke these words unto it, The Most High has made you that you should be higher than all birds. And now go and tarry not in any place, nor enter a nest, nor settle upon any tree, till you have passed over the breadth of many waters of the river Euphrates, and have gone to the people that dwell there, and cast down to them this epistle. There we see. That was the only means to be able to get it all the way over there to them. They didn't have the luxury of email or <laughs> sending a text message as we do today. Well, I have blessed them with the bird being able to deliver the message. It was interesting how we mentioned that the bird had to go over the many waters across the Euphrates. When we look at the scriptures to see what those many waters were, it's in Second Ezra chapter 13 that we get to understand it was in regards to that bird going over to the region of Asher where the 10 tribes went. Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salmanesa the king of Assyria led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Now, it's interesting, the king of Assyria, he was able to just take them straight over the waters. This was an easy journey. People were able to travel. Matter of fact, we had read in the book of Judith how Halifernes, the Syrian army, had came to fight against the land of Judah. People were traveling from Assyria to the land of Israel. It wasn't a hard thing to do. Now, that waters that the people had went on to was way beyond that land of Assyria. If you can continue, please. Sure. Second Edges chapter 13, verse 43. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely, of a year and a half. In the same region is called Arsaret. And there we see why Baruch had to send a bird to deliver that message. Because it was a year and a half journey by sea to get to where they went. Now, sadly, as the precepts show, the ten tribes, when they went over to the region of Arsaret, they didn't go over there for righteousness sake. They went over there so that they could do their own laws. They went to establish their own righteousness. If you read the book of Romans, chapter 10, Paul talks about his prayer for Israel is that they may be saved because he bear the witness that they have a zeal for Allah, but not according to knowledge. And being ignorant of the righteousness of Allah, they've established their own righteousness. And that is sadly what the northern kingdom went to do. As verse 42 of 2nd Ezra, it said that they might keep their statutes. 
They went to establish their own law. Hence, sadly, you can find the 10 tribes in the regions of the Indian Ocean Islands, Pacific Ocean Islands, and the Americas, the people that are known as the natives and aboriginals and whatnot. They were in gross idolatry. They took it beyond even what Jeroboam, the king of Israel, had done because they went and did their own thing, not even what their king had taught them. They had separated themselves from the laws of al And you can see their practices when you look at what they were doing. You might find some Hebrew practices like circumcision and as a whole. They were given into apostasy. And also the kingdom of Judah we were given into apostasy as well. And so when you look at the culture of like the Bantus, there's a lot of idolatry, though there may still be practices that were biblical as a whole, they're given into idolatry. Right. Because if they wanted to get on track, they could have just tried to get back with the Southern Kingdom and try to get everybody back on, on one accord. Right. Right. So that word region, when it said the same region is called Osra, the second edge was written in Greek. The Greek word for region is G5561, and it means the idea of an empty expanse, room that is space of territory, more or less extensive. That was key, that it's a space of territory, more or less extensive. That territory, when it refers to the region of Arsret, is the territory outside of the four corners of the earth, the allotment of the sons of Noah. That is why, in part, we went over that lesson on the four corners of the earth to understand what that allotment was so that we can better understand what that region of Arsareth was outside of that allotment. Okay. In short, thus far, we have a decent understanding of the kingdom of Judah. It contained Judah, Benjamin, Levi, remnant of Simeon, and a remnant of the rest of the 10 tribes. And they remained, of course, eventually as they were led captive, they went other places, but they remained in the four corners of the earth within the allotments of the sons of Noah by the time of the Babylonian captivity. On the other hand, the 10 tribes, which were the kingdom of Israel, the unrighteous decided they were going to go off to another land to keep their own statutes and they went to a region called Arsaret, which is outside of the allotment of the sons of Noah. Today, that's the islands of the, the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, and the Americas, North, Central, and South. So that gives an overview of where the tribes could be found by the time of the Babylonian captivity. Okay, so with that, that's a nice stopping point. On the next one, we'll get into the rest of the history of the Jews and their characteristics. Anything else, Zachwa? Uh, okay, we'll, we hope this video is stream better today. Um, Ahaya Willen, if you be gracious unto us, and uh, peace be unto you. Talam. <laughs> Talam. <laughs>